All right, so what we're going to talk about now is a skill called detect icebergs. Everyone, please make sure you're on this page. And what I'm going to do before we even kind of get into the skill is I'm going to explain the metaphor of the iceberg, all right? Because we're going to use the term iceberg a lot in this program. I want to make sure you understand what I mean. So if you could just draw a little line by the water line and write surface of your awareness. So the water line in this picture of the iceberg represents what you're aware of. The things above the water line are your thoughts that you're aware of. I can say, hey, what are you thinking? And you could take a heartbeat, check your thinking, and you could tell me what you're thinking because that thought is in your awareness. So the stuff sticking up, the part of the iceberg sticking above the water line are thoughts that are in your awareness. That's all that part means. The part below the waterline, the big, big mass, are values and beliefs that are outside your awareness. You're not thinking about them consciously. You're not aware of them the same way that you're aware of the thoughts that are above the surface of your awareness, but they're affecting you. They're driving your emotions and reactions. So the metaphor of the iceberg is simply, the part above the waterline is what you're aware of. The waterline represents your awareness level. And the iceberg portion below the waterline are values and beliefs that are affecting you, but you're not aware of them in that moment. All right? And so if you could just scribble on this slide somewhere, icebergs are not necessarily bad. Icebergs are not necessarily bad. And the reason I'm saying that is because even though the iceberg metaphor is just about awareness, what are you aware of at this point in time, people hear the word iceberg and they think, oh, icebergs are bad, right? They think icebergs sunk the Titanic. I blame James Cameron. And so they assume that what we're talking about are values and beliefs that are going to get you into trouble always. And that's not what we're talking about. All we're going to be talking about in this skill is bringing values and beliefs that are outside your awareness at that moment into your awareness. So that's where we're heading. All right? Metaphor of the iceberg. So detect icebergs. This skill is going to build self-awareness. Go ahead and circle self-awareness. That's a primary MRT competency that Detecting icebergs is going to build. And you'll see that once we bring our icebergs, our core values and beliefs, into our awareness, then we get to do the heavy lifting. Then we get to say to ourselves, hey, do I still believe this? Do I still value this? If so, you can reinforce that belief or value. Or you might decide, you know what? I believed that when I was 15. I valued that when I was 20 but I don't value or believe that today. And so you could change it. You can't change something or reinforce something if it's not in your awareness. So we're gonna talk about reinforcing and changing our icebergs. And this next bullet point, it's important to know your icebergs because as you'll see, your values and beliefs can affect your emotions and reactions. But if they're affecting your emotions and reactions and you don't even know it, you don't have control. And leadership requires control. Being effective requires control. Resilience requires control. So we're going to be talking about how you can have greater control by knowing what your icebergs are. Great leaders are going to be able to stay under control even when situations are hard. So that's where we're heading. So let's talk a little bit about the difference between a heat of the moment thought and an iceberg. So heat of the moment thoughts. That's what we've been talking about so far in this program. When we talk about ATC, and I said, give me an activating event and tell me, how does your brain work in the wild? What popped into your head in the heat of the moment? Those are all thoughts that are on the surface of your awareness. I can ask you, hey, what are you thinking? And you could pause for a second and tell me what your thought is because it's on the surface of your awareness. So we've been doing that in ATC. We've been doing that in thinking traps. 
So those are heat of the moment thoughts. They're easy to tune into. Maybe circle, easily tune in. I can ask you what you're thinking, you could reflect, and you can easily tell me what's running through your brain, just like a kind of ticker tape. But now we're gonna shift gears and we're gonna talk about icebergs. And there are two different, related, but different concepts that are icebergs. So number one, core value. So an iceberg can be a core value. A core value is something you aspire to. Circle the word aspire. And by aspire, I mean, you know, it's your North Star. It's a value, a principle that you use as a guiding force in your life. It orients you. It, it helps you to make decisions and choices. It guides how you treat people how you interact with others. And so a core value is something that you aspire to. They're usually in the form of the word should. For example, it could be something like, I believe people should be treated with dignity and respect. That's a core value of mine. And so it guides how I interact with people, choices I make in my life. So they're should statements. Let me write down should statements. And they can be should statements about myself. I should be respectful. They could be should statements about other people. People should be fair. And they could be should statements about the world. The world should be a good place. So should statements are examples of what we call core values, what we aspire to. Okay, so we got those. Let's talk about core beliefs. So core beliefs are what you believe is true. Write down is true. That's what your core beliefs are. What you believe is true about yourself or is true about other people or is true about the world. So an example of a core belief of mine is I am a kind person. That's a core belief of mine. I believe that deeply, that I'm kind. And we could figure out whether or not that's true. You could give me some feedback on that based on how I'm treating you. But it is how I believe I am. Now, a core belief can also be counterproductive, right? Let's think about somebody that might have a counterproductive core belief. They believe it with every cell in their body, but they don't aspire to it. So for example, if one of your soldiers believes deeply, deeply, from the time he was you know, 10 years old, I'll never amount to much. I'm never gonna amount to much. He doesn't aspire to that. He wants to amount to much, but he believes with every cell in his body, you know, I'm a failure. I'll never amount to much. So core beliefs can be productive, set us up for success, and they can also be counterproductive. All we're getting at with this core belief idea is that you deeply, deeply believe it. It's not just a quick little thought. It's something that you've believed for a long period of time about how it is in the world, how you are. Core values, core beliefs. Make sense, the distinction? We're going to play around with it. So on the screen, you see some examples of icebergs. And some of them are values, and some of them are beliefs. So, I am strong. People can't be trusted. You should respect your elders. Again, that word should is a good indicator that it's a core value, because it's a, a rule that you think people ought to live by. The world's a dangerous place. You should treat people with dignity and respect. So these are all examples of icebergs. Let's hear some of your icebergs. So again, what you believe is true of you or of others, or your values, what you aspire to. So let's get some examples. Yeah, sorry, baby. You should put mission above soldier, above family, above self. Great example. You should, hear that word should, put mission above family, above soldier, above self. It's an iceberg. Who's got another one? Yeah, all right, down. Um, you should respect your elders. You should respect your elders. Great. Let's get a couple more. Katie. People should balance their work and family life. People should balance their work and their family life. Again, it's kind of a rule. You can hear how it sounds like a rule. 
Let's get another one. Suzanne. People should take responsibility for their actions. People should take responsibility for their actions. Let's try to get one or two more. Yes, aren't stamps. Um, I believe that as a leader, you should be able to handle your own problems yourself. As a leader, you should be able to handle all of your problems yourself. Gabe, did you have one? Work hard, play hard. Work hard, play hard. Did, he didn't use the word should, which is perfectly fine, but I could translate it. You should work hard and you should play hard. Great. Let's get one or two more on the belief side. So something that you believe is true of yourself or of others. Bob, do you have one? I'm just not good with people. If Bob believes that deeply, he really, really believes that. I mean, we could test that out for him, help him figure out is that accurate or not. But you could hear how that's a, a deep belief, a core belief of, for Bob. Let's get one more on the belief side. Who's got another? Yeah, Katie. I believe kids are getting weaker. I believe kids are getting weaker. We could test that out. So you guys got it. Great job. So we've got core values, what you aspire to, North Star, they orient you. You got those core beliefs. You believe it with every cell in your body about how it is. Should, values, is, beliefs. We got it? All right, we have an idea of what icebergs are, great. But now we're gonna move to the skill part of it. So let's now think about when do you need to kind of go beneath the surface and figure out what your iceberg is? And there are three major indicators, sort of these are the three times where we know, boy, there's probably something else going on that's outside your awareness and you need to bring it into your awareness. So the first one, it says your emotions or reactions are out of proportion to what you're thinking in the heat of the moment. So imagine that my heat of the moment thought is a trespass thought, right? And so by trespass, we mean, you know, I've been harmed or, you know, you've violated my rights. But my heat of the moment thought is really like, you know, you've just, just, barely violated my rights, or you've harmed me just a tiny bit. That's my heat of the moment thought. How much anger do you think I'm gonna experience? Just a little. A little, right? I mean, it should be, you know, if, if my thought is there was a small violation of my rights, or I've been harmed a small degree, then we'd expect I'd have a small degree of anger. But instead of just having a little anger, or being, you know, mildly frustrated, or a little bit irritated, I am white hot enraged. I am so angry that there's froth, spittle, that I am just working myself, I am just so, so angry. We're gonna call that an example of my emotions and reactions are out of proportion to that heat of the moment thought, and that's a sign. There's something else going on. There's something beneath the surface of my awareness that's driving all that fury and if I want to have more control, I better figure out what it is, the iceberg. The second one is when your emotions or reactions surprise you or confuse you. Circle the word confuse, because I think even more than surprise, it's that sense of, huh, why am I, uh, this isn't making sense. And you'll see it says a TC disconnect. And by TC disconnect, what we mean is, Remember that chart, try to visualize that chart. We got the thought themes, and then we've got the emotions and reactions they drive to. So let's say my heat of the moment thought is about trespass. So my heat of the moment thought is about trespass. What emotion or reaction ought that drive to? Yeah, sorry, travel. Anger. Anger. So if I'm thinking about how you've harmed me, or how you violated my rights, we're gonna expect that I'm gonna be somewhere in the anger family, ticked off. But instead of being angry, I feel really guilty. What? Guilt? That doesn't make sense. The chart said that if it's a trespass thought, it should drive to anger, but I'm not feeling angry, I'm feeling guilty. So there's a disconnect between my thought theme and my emotion or reaction, D TC disconnect, that's a sign that there's something else going on. There's something underneath the surface of my awareness that's probably driving that guilt because it wasn't explained by my heat of the moment thought, so what does explain it? That's what we have to figure out. So we're gonna look for the iceberg in that case. 
So that's indicator number two. And indicator number three is when you have a strong thinking trap pattern. So let's play with this one for a little. So this one's a little harder. So what I'm suggesting is that if you notice that of those six thinking traps, we got, you know, mind reading and jumping to conclusions and me, 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 and them, 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 and always and everything. If there's one of those six that you seem to fall into like a lot of the time, high frequency that trap for you. What we're suggesting is that often there's an iceberg, a core value or a core belief that's kind of pushing you into that trap. You know, it's sticking its leg out so you trip over and fall right into the trap. So let's play around with it for a second. If you're somebody who falls into the thinking trap of me, 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 so let's just review real fast. What is the me, me, me thinking trap? Certain stance? Thinking that you're always the sole cause of whatever happens. Okay, perfect, perfect. If you believe that you're the sole cause of everything, that's the me, me, me thinking trap. So what could be an iceberg, a core value, a core belief somebody has that kind of sends them in that direction, the me, me, me direction, over and over and over again. Who's got an idea? Suzanne. I can't do anything right. Great. So if I believe I can't do anything right, then when I encounter a problem, situation, my iceberg is going to push me in the me, me, me thinking trap direction. Let's just do one more. How about if you had the iceberg, I'm going to make it harder. What if you had the thinking trap of always? So what's the always thinking trap? Let's just define that as a quick review. The always thinking trap. So I'm put it in their own words. So it's like the bad things are here to stay. This is going to happen all the time. Great. No, I love that. So it's all the time. This is always happening. What would we add to that? One more piece to it. Yeah, Gabe. They're unchangeable or like we have no control over That's them. Great. So this thing is always happening and I don't have any control over it, so that's the thinking trap. Let's think about an iceberg that's going to push you into that trap over and over again. Yeah. I'm destined to be like this. Ooh. I'm destined to be like this. I'm, if I believe I'm destined to be like this, then that's going to send you in the direction of believing you have no control. That's a great one. Let's do one more iceberg on that. What's another iceberg that pushes you towards the thinking trap of always? Katie. People don't change anyway. Okay, great. People don't change anyway. So if I deeply, deeply, deeply believe people don't change, then when I encounter a problem, I'm going to be more likely to fall into the trap of, oh, this is just the way it's going to be. It's going to stay like this forever because of my deeply held belief, my iceberg, that people don't change anyway. Great job with that. So these are the big three. The big three indicators, so if one of these things happens to you, your emotions or reactions seem out of proportion to what you were thinking in the heat of the moment, that's a time to use the skill of detecting the iceberg. Or if you're just confused, like, what am I doing? Why am I reacting this way? It doesn't make any sense. If there's a TC disconnect, that's a sign to stop and ask yourself some questions that are going to help you detect your iceberg. You're going to learn that. And then the third one is, as you go through this program, if you notice that you lean towards one of those thinking traps, one of those six, you fall into that trap a lot, then that's another signal. This is a good time for you to understand what's pushing you that way. So big three indicators. All right, let me pause here for a second and ask you what questions do you have about the skill of detect icebergs? So I travel. Are there other what questions that we can ask and what sort of wording should we be careful of? Okay, that's a really great question. So your MRT taught you how to help yourself or someone else detect an iceberg, right? And they, your MRT taught you that you're going to ask what questions instead of why questions. And some of the what questions were, you know, what's the most upsetting part of that for you? Or what does that mean to me? But do you think those are the only questions that we can ask? No. No. And some of you are probably thinking, I, I don't know about you, but that's not, those words aren't going to come out of my mouth. Or I don't see my soldiers saying, 
okay, what's the most upsetting part of that? For That's perfectly fine. So great question. And the answer is no, you don't have to use the four that we review in this course, but let's think about why, what questions are helpful. It's kind of a funny way of saying it, but what do what questions do? When someone asks oneself or someone else a what question, what do those what questions do? Yeah. They help us get deeper. Good. So they help you. The function of the what questions is just that they help you go deeper. They minimize defensiveness. When we ask the why questions, we tend to, you want to know why? I'm going to tell you why. We get defensive. We just argue our case, but we're not going beneath the surface. So to your point, if you don't like those what questions, make up some of your own. And the guiding principle needs to be, is this helping me to go deeper? beneath the surface? Am I diving down and learning something new about what's going on for me? And so as long as the question you're asking is helping you or the other person get off the surface level, because that's where you're stuck, and get beneath that waterline to discover something new, then you're doing your job and helping yourself or someone else to ask to, to find the iceberg. Good question. Give me another question. What are some other questions you have? Yeah, Bob. How many what questions do you need to ask? How do you know when you're done? I mean, to Bob's point, couldn't you ask these what questions until the end of time? I mean, I don't know about you, but I got things to do today. I mean, how do I know when I'm done asking what questions? And I think the answer is you're done asking what questions when you found the iceberg. So how do you know if you found the iceberg? How do you know if you uncovered the iceberg? What do you think? Yeah, Katie. You're not confused anymore? Your reaction starts to make sense? So go back to the indicators. And if you're done asking the what questions, when you found the iceberg, and you know you found the iceberg, when your reactions and emotions don't seem out of proportion. Oh, I get it. No wonder I was so down and couldn't get out of bed in the morning. It's because what was really going on for me was this, beneath the surface, not what was going on in the heat of the moment. Or you're not confused. The TC connection makes sense again. Oh, no wonder I felt guilty instead of angry. It's because what I was really thinking about outside my awareness was this, the iceberg. Or you understand why there's all that me, me, me going on. Oh, no wonder I fall in that trap all the time. So it's that sense of, oh, I got it. When you got it, you don't need to ask any more what questions. Good. Another question. Give me another question. Who else has one? Yeah. yeah. Are there other situations that might call for this iceberg? So here's three. But is this all of them? Absolutely not. So here's two other indicators. It's time to go beneath the surface. One is a pet peeve. So how many of you have? You don't have to tell me what it is, but how many of you have something you would describe as a pet peeve? I know I do. For me, it's when people are late. Um, so if you have a pet peeve, it's usually related to an iceberg. And so when you find yourself getting really worked up over something that maybe seems small to other people, but to you it is not small, that's an indicator, hey, let, let's see what this is really about for me. So for me, people being late is a pet peeve because my iceberg is lateness is a sign of disrespect. If you respect me, you will show up when you say you're going to show up. So don't be late. Um, so a pet peeve is a good time to look for the iceberg. And the second one is when a seemingly straightforward decision. So this decision should be easy for you. It's a no-brainer. You should know what the decision is. What, but you can't. You can't make up your mind. You're stuck coming up with a decision, even though on the surface it looks like this is a no-brainer. I should know exactly what to do. I should know exactly what to choose. Which door do I want? You should know. And when you're stuck making a seemingly straightforward decision, that's an indicator that, interestingly, you might have two icebergs two core values or two core beliefs, both of which are operating and clashing. So a quick example of that, 
Let's say the decision is, this is actually someone I worked with, was grooming herself to become the superintendent of a school district. She had worked for years being a teacher, grooming herself to become superintendent, and it was time to throw her resume in the, in the ring to be considered. And yet, I mean, everyone said, oh, she's going to do it. Yay, she's putting the resume in. And she could not, for the life of her, figure out, do I want to go after this job or not? And it made no sense to her because she'd been working her entire career to get that job. And so she felt like she was going a little crazy. And when she did the detect icebergs, what she found was she had two icebergs that were clashing. Iceberg number one, women should aspire to the highest level in their careers just like men. So that would say what? Go for it, baby. Take that job. It's yours. Her other iceberg was a good mom always puts her children first. And so that iceberg was pushing her away from the job because she was thinking, well, I'm going to have to travel more. I'm going to be out a lot in the evenings as a superintendent. None of that was in her awareness. The only thing that was in her awareness was, why can't I make up my mind? This is craziness. And when we did the iceberg work, she realized there were two, they were clashing, and then she could start to think about that. So we've got three on the screen, two others, pet peeve, and seemingly simple decision is hard to make. Great. Very well done. And we're going to continue on to our next skill.